There's a rumor going around. If you like this video and subscribe you can use takeover magic. Hi guys this is the next part of. What if Itachi Uchiha was reincarnated in the world of fairy tale. I hope you enjoy. Having arrived at their vacation the team quickly went to the beach. Itachi was sitting on a blanket reading a book while the others had their own fun. Itachi then looked around at the beach. Something tells me I have been here before, and I don't like it one bit. Itachi thought as flashbacks of him dragging an unconscious little Urza popped into his mind. This beach is where me and Urza arrived after escaping the Tower of Heaven. Itachi thought then looked over to the others who were playing beach volleyball. He noticed that Urza was laughing and having a good time. Yes she hasn't noticed. There's no need to bring up old memories like that anyway. Oni-chan. Don't just sit around, join us. Urza shouted at Itachi with the others behind her. Yeah, come on dude let's party. Natsu shouted. I, happy agreed. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Itachi gave in with a little smirk planted on his face. The place our group was in is called Akane Resort. Akane Resort is a popular tourist spot in the kingdom, it consisted of a giant amusement park and a five-star hotel next door. Hey give me back my boxers, you bastard. Gray shouted as Natsu waved Gray's boxer shorts in the air, as Gray used Happy to cover his private area. Not on your life, Natsu said with a mocking tone as he laughed at Gray. Don't use Happy to cover yourself up. Lucy scolded the ice mage. None of them besides Itachi noticed a certain blue-haired girl hiding behind a palm tree. Gray Sama, so bold. Juvia proclaimed with a blush looking at her beloved. Later at the hotel Urza was resting on the balcony of her hotel room wearing her black bikini. As she fell asleep nightmares of her days as a slave came to her mind. She then woke up breathing heavily and sweating. Are you okay? Itachi asked walking out on the balcony placing his hand on Urza's shoulder. I just had a dream. Urza said still in a little shock. I can see that, a nightmare I assume. Was it about that? Itachi asked to which Urza nodded and walked into the room, standing in front of the mirror and changing into her standard armor. I really do feel more at ease while I'm in armor. Urza said, everyone is going to the casino downstairs, Natsu, Grey, Happy and Lucy are already down there. Said Itachi, that's right they do have a place like that here. Then, Urza said as she requipped into a purple dress with red rose marks on them, as well as her hair being tied up in a bun. Do I look the part? As always you enjoy dressing up. Itachi said with a nervous chuckle. Aren't you going to change, Oni-chan? Urza questioned as Itachi was wearing his black leather jacket with a large fairy tail mark on his back, under his jacket was a white shirt, he had dark blue jeans and combat shoes. Don't you think you need to wear something more suitable for this occasion? It's a casino, they will let me in as long as I pay. Itachi bluntly replied. Anyway, let's go. Itachi said and walked out of the room. Later down at the casino which also had some entertainment for the kids as well for the adults. Natsu and Happy were playing at a machine that was a large glass dome with some orbs with numbers on them. In front of Natsu was a console with numbers, he kept pressing the number 17. 17. Come on, 17. Natsu pleaded. You can do it, 17. Happy cheered as the orbs inside the machine almost had a three line of 17s but one quickly changed into the number 16. You've got to be kidding me. Natsu shouted hitting the buttons furiously. 17. Happy shouted. Sir, please refrain from, a staff member tried to calm down Natsu. But it stopped on 17 once. It's so cruel. Natsu shouted with tears streaming down his eyes like waterfalls. 17. Happy shouted. Yelling isn't going to help. The staff member said as he frowned at Natsu and Happy's behavior. Go back to 17. Natsu shouted. While this was happening Gray was sitting on a card table with a sweat drop as he heard Natsu and Happy shouting. Sheesh, they're so immature. Gray sama Juvia arrived walking up to Gray, as she was wearing a blue dress, she had a necklace with a golden fairy tail mark on it that was covering most of her large cleavage. Juvia is here, you're that phantom woman, Gray said in shock. Itachi walked around looking for something to kill some time when suddenly a staff member walked up to him. Are you looking for something, sir? I'm not quite sure what I should do. Itachi said, I see, this must be your first time in a casino, please follow me and I will show you something basic. The man said leading Itachi to a box that had a screen on it and a lever on the side. All you have to do is put money in here, pull the lever and get three of the same thing and you will win some money. If you get three sevens you win the jackpot. Seems easy enough. Itachi said and sat down, 
He put money in the machine and pulled the lever getting a 7, and two marks that were the fairy tale guild mark. Not perfect, Itachi said as his eyes narrowed and he kept playing. Damn it, Itachi cursed as he didn't get a perfect result and he then tried again. Damn it, 17, come back now, Natsu cried while punching the buttons. Sir, please, hold it, boy. Casinos are places for grown-ups, for dandies. Get it, a man that looked like a shape of blocks dressed in some sort of mafia outfit, with a royal blue suit with a white shirt underneath and a red necktie, a white scarf hanging loose over his neck, he had dark hair and thick lips and an oddly shaped chin, and he had a red hat on the top of his head, he also wore black sunglasses. Blocky, Natsu reacted to his appearance. Boy, let me tell you something. There's only two paths that men can travel. The block man said. Huh, Natsu questioned as suddenly the block man's lower body split into several blocks and attached themselves to Natsu's arms, pushing him up against the glass dome. What are you, Natsu? Happy shouted. Live on as a dandy, the block man said as he pointed his finger at Natsu when suddenly his arm turned into a rifle with a laser sight, as a red dot was on Natsu's head. Or stop and meet your end. Get it? Meanwhile at the bar counter Gray was sitting and having a chat with Juvia. I heard that Phantom was disbanded. Gray said, yes, Juvia is now a free wizard. Gray then noticed her necklace with the fairy tale mark. So I take it you want to join fairy tale, then? Yes, Juvia does, but after all that, well, I don't mind, but I'm not sure what the master would say. Gray said, Juvia will do anything, Juvia said as hearts and stars were around her. I wouldn't say that so lightly if I were you. Gray said, Gray fullbuster, a man walked up behind Gray. The man was very tall and muscular, he had a wide face and dark eyes, his left eye was covered by a black eye patch held up by an extremely thin rope, with a thin scar emerging from under it, his massive jaw was obscured by an armored metal plate that resembled a skeletal jaw. The top of his head was covered in a light cloth wrapped around it, tied on the back, where a pair of long wrappings were left hanging over his neck. He wore a large cloth going over his left shoulder to his waist, the cloth had a large sleeve going over his left arm, he wore loose dark pants and some simple boots. His one eye that wasn't covered suddenly had a magic circle on it as the bar counter exploded, but the sound was covered up by fireworks from outside. What was all that noise? Urza questioned sitting with Lucy at some card table. I guess the parade has started outside. A man wearing some sort of duck, fish-like head. Seems to be the parade. Lucy said, back at the ruined bar counter. Juvia. Gray shouted as Juvia laid injured in the rubble. Why, you, who the hell are you? Gray questioned. Where is Urza? The man asked. What? Gray questioned. Where is Urza? Get it? The block man asked still aiming his gun at Natsu. Back with Urza and Lucy. They were sitting and playing cards. Dealer change. A new dealer arrived. I have a feeling that I won't lose no matter who I'm up against. Urza said. Yup. Lucy agreed with a wink. Then, why don't we play a special game? The dealer said as he dealt out cards that had letters on them that spelled, death. Let's play a game where your life's on the line, Urza Neeson, the dealer said with an evil smirk. He had spiky blonde hair and a dark tan skin color, on his left ear was an earring with diamond decorations, on his lower lip was a five-shaped tattoo, his eyes were dark green. You're, show, show, right, Urza questioned in shock, it's been quite a while, nay san. The man replied, nay san, Lucy questioned. You were, safe, Urza muttered still in shock. Safe, Sho questioned with an evil grin. Um, well, Urza said while shaking. Urza, Lucy questioned, back with Gray. Where is Urza? The man asked again. You think I'll tell you? Gray said as water gathered in front of him and turned into Juvia. I will not allow you to lay a finger on Gray-sama. Juvia will be your opponent. Danger is closing in around Urza-san. Juvia said, sure looks like it, Gray admitted. The man suddenly directed his fingers to his temple. What? You found her already? Oh, I see. So I can clean up here. Understood. The man said as everything around them went dark. Whoa, it went dark. Gray shouted. It's dark lineage magic. Dark moment. The man said now behind Gray and Juvia with a magic circle in his hands. With Natsu. What's going on? I can't see a thing. Natsu said. Natsu where are you? Happy questioned. I'm here. But. Where's here, Natsu? Good night, boy, the block man said with a smirk. Don't give me that crap. Natsu shouted with his mouth so wide that the laser dot pointed now inside his mouth. Blam. Gah. Natsu grunted as he was shot. Natsu. Happy shouted. A gunshot. 
Lucy noticed. What's happened? Urza questioned when the lights suddenly went back on. Sho was gone as well as everyone else around them. Sho. Huh? Lucy questioned. Over here, Nay san Sho said as he was behind them with cards in his hand that contained the people from the casino. That's, Urza said. The people are in the cards. Lucy pointed out. Intrigued. Sho asked. Magic? Urza muttered. Yes. I can use it now too, Nay san Sho said smugly. You? What have you? Urza asked bewildered. NYA. A female voice was heard as Lucy was tied up in some sort of rope. Lucy. Urza shouted. Feelin' chip and, dipper. A girl with brown hair that reached to her shoulders, the top of her head looked like she had kitty ears. She had two red marks on each of her cheeks, her face looked like that of a cat, she wore a yellow jacket with a pink dress underneath with a white bow tie, she had a choker with a bell on it around her neck, and she wore leggings. Miliana, you can use magic too. Urza questioned to the cat girl. How's it been, Urchan? Miliana said, let Lucy go, she's my friend, Urza demanded, NYA, friend, Miliana questioned, we were your friends too once, isn't that right, Nay San? We were, remember, that is until you went with that man and betrayed us, Nay San. Sho said as Urza began to shake, don't abuse Urza so much, Sho, a man who's a dandy should keep his emotions in check, the block man said appearing next to Sho, long time no see, you grew a pretty hot body there. Are you, Wally? Urza asked. I suppose it's not surprising you wouldn't recognize me. Back then, when I was called Mad Dog Wally, I was a lot more, rough around the edges. The block man known as Wally said. You also use magic? Urza asked. You shouldn't be surprised. Once you get the hang of it, anyone can use magic. Isn't that right, Urza? The muscular man appeared behind Urza. Simon, Urza turned around to face the man and backed away. Urza. Who are these people? And why is he calling you Nay San? Lucy asked as the rope holding her began to tighten. I'm not actually their sister. We were all together in the past. Urza replied, together. But haven't you been in fairy tale since you were really young? Lucy asked. It was before that. Urza replied. Why are you here? Why? Miliana said. To take you back. Wally proclaimed. Release Lucy. Urza demanded. How about we go home, Nay San? Sho asked. Unless you do what we say, Wally said and directed his gun arm at Lucy. When suddenly someone grabbed the arm, pushed it upwards and kicked Wally in the gut sending him flying back. What business do you have with my little sister? Itachi asked standing in front of Urza facing Urza's old friends with his Sharingan spinning. We're here to take her back. You're welcome to join us if you want. Even if it was short, you were still a prisoner like us. Simon said. Back where? To the Tower of Heaven. Itachi asked narrowing his eyes. Yes, and no way is this guy coming along with us. Sho said and held up a card, Itachi quickly threw a kunai hitting the card out of Sho's hand. I remember your faces from back then, although I wasn't there for a long time after all, but I still remember your faces from that cell. Itachi said as a magic circle appeared beneath him. Itachi leapt in the air dodging Miliana's rope. Last chance, leave Urza alone. Itachi warned. Simon then appeared behind Itachi with a magic circle in his hands. Itachi quickly leapt away and threw a kunai with a paper bomb tag on it. It hit next to Simon and exploded. Just back away or come with us. Simon said. No way. Itachi said and made a few hand signs. Fire style. Fireball Itachi was about to spit out his fireball jutsu when he suddenly felt a stabbing pain in his chest. He then clenched his hand over his chest as he fell to his knees. Damn it. Not now, Itachi cursed as suddenly he was shot by Wally and fell to the floor unconscious. Oni-chan, Urza shouted as she was shot unconscious by Wally as well. Urza, Itachi, Lucy shouted, we have achieved our objective. Let us return home, Simon said holding an unconscious Urza in his arms. You did it the right way, Sho asked looking at Wally. I used a tranquilizer shot, Wally replied, hey, where are you taking Urza? Lucy questioned, give her back. If you guys hadn't taken a cheap shot at Itachi, you would have been blown away instantly. Same if you were up against Natsu or Grey. Sorry, but those last two ones got blown away. Simon said. Huh. Lucy gasped. They were overrated. Wally said. N no. Then there. Lucy muttered. As you imagine. Simon said. NYA. Miliana said tightening the rope on Lucy. In another five minutes your body will be completely bent backwards. Speaking of which, Miliana, I have a present for you. 
Wally said as a sleeping happy suddenly appeared in his hands. It's a kitty cat. I'm so happy. Miliana cheered snuggling with the sleeping happy. Happy. Lucy shouted. Miliana, bind Urza. Wally said. A kitty cat. Miliana was too busy with happy to listen. Miliana, we're counting on you. Wally said. Nay San, you're coming back, to the Tower of Heaven. I just know that Jalal will be pleased. Sho said as tears ran down his cheeks. Urza, Urza, Lucy shouted as they vanished through a magic circle. Urza, arg, I'm gonna bust out of this thing. Lucy began to roll around. Oh, Itachi, Itachi wake up they took Urza. Lucy shouted, E Urza, Itachi muttered as his eyes slowly opened and he got back up. Itachi, cut me loose will you? Lucy said, oh, yeah, Itachi said and took out a kanai and cut the rope off Lucy. He then looked over to the people in the cards. We will get you out of there once we get back. We have to find Natsu and Gray. Lucy said as Itachi nodded in response, they ran towards the bar counter where they saw a knocked out Gray. Gray, no, Lucy and Itachi ran up to Gray. Hey, get a hold of yourself. That's not Gray, Itachi said, huh, Lucy questioned. It's an ice clone, Itachi said as the gray in front of Lucy turned into ice. The real gray is over there, Itachi said and pointed at Juvia. You're quite perceptive, Juvia is impressed. Juvia said as a lot of water was beneath her. You're one of element four. Lucy readied her keys. Wait Lucy, she's not our enemy anymore. Gray said as he was revealed to be underneath Juvia. That is correct, Gray Sama was inside of Juvia. Juvia said, I inside, Lucy stuttering at the revelation. Not inside of you, inside of Juvia. Juvia said with a huge amount of pride. Yes, that is true. Lucy said not quite understanding what Juvia's deal was. After it got dark all of a sudden, I figured I'd leave a double and see how things turned out, but, Gray said and began to take of his shirt. In order for him not to be discovered by the enemy, Juvia protected Gray Sama in her water lock. Juvia said, and thanks to your meddling, he got away. Gray said as he took off his shirt. Lucy, where's Natsu and the others? I don't know about Natsu, but Happy and Urza have been, Lucy said when suddenly a huge wave of flames flew in the air. Natsu, they said in unison, what a creep, Natsu said as smoke was coming out from his mouth. Natsu, Lucy shouted as she and the others ran up to the dragon slayer. Did something happen? Gray questioned, is it normal to go shooting people in the mouth? That hurt, a guy could get hurt really bad. Natsu said, the others turned pale, um, normal people would be killed. Lucy said, such is the salamander. Juvia giggled, that damn blockhead, I won't let him escape. Natsu said and ran around the casino. After him, Gray directed, sure, but where did they go? Lucy questioned, I know where they are, and so far Natsu's going the right direction. Itachi said and walked after the pink-haired dragon slayer. He's got a nose that will put most animals to shame after all. Gray said and followed, along with Lucy and Juvia. Blockhead. Natsu ran out from the casino. We're going to need a boat if we're going to go to the Tower of Heaven. Itachi said. What is this Tower of Heaven anyway? Gray asked. It's a place where a certain cult would take people from other villages and force them to work as slaves to build the tower, for those people like Urza, that place is hell. Itachi replied in a gloomy tone. How do you know about it? Lucy questioned. The guards found me washed up on the beach, they took me there and that's where I met Urza. I only stayed there for a short time since the moment I gained consciousness I helped Urza escape. I don't know anything more than that, Urza really hasn't said much about the place. Itachi replied. So Urza San, was a slave? Juvia questioned. Yes she was, and so were those people that kidnapped her and happy. Itachi replied. Meanwhile at the Magic Council in era inside a building on top of a hill, the Magic Council was having an emergency meeting. The nine people were standing around having a discussion. It still exists, you say. That's impossible, one of the members said. A black magic cult plotted to construct the R system about a decade ago, another member said. But we destroyed all seven towers ourselves. A short little old man with brown hair with something that looked like cat ears on the top of his head, he had a mustache, he also had a tail sticking out from his back. There was an eighth tower. In the waters near Ka Elm. An old woman informed. Its appearance. Don't tell me it's completed. An old bearded man asked as an orb showing the image of the tower on an island. The investigation team went missing right after sending these images. An old woman informed. It must be complete. A dark purple haired woman with brown eyes. She had a rather voluptuous figure. 
She wore a short white robe that stopped around her waist as she was showing her legs. The R system, why now, after all this time? The short old cat man questioned. The Tower of Heaven. You mean the Tower of Heaven, not our system. Said a young man with short blue hair and brown eyes, he had a red tattoo both above and below his right eye. He was dressed in a long white frock coat with black stripes across the edges on his upper arms, the coat was over a black shirt with matching pants and shoes. It makes no difference what it's called. It's forbidden magic. Word of its existence alone would cause pandemonium. The old bearded man said. We must send troops at once and subdue them immediately. The old woman demanded. But, given who we're dealing with, a man with a white hood, wearing black sunglasses, he had black hair. What do you mean? The old woman asked. Last night's incident at Akane Beach, on the border, judging from what rescued eyewitnesses have said, it would seem that magic cult is not the one occupying the R system. The hooded man replied, just who is, then? The short cat man questioned. He apparently calls himself Jalal. The hooded man replied, Jalal. The cat man exclaimed in shock. That's your twin brother, Seagrain. The bearded man said looking at the young blue-haired man. Yes, I'm aware of that, the man known as Seagrain said. Back with our group, say, do you think the people trapped in the cards have been rescued? Lucy asked. We left the military no before we left, so they're probably fine now. Gray replied as they were now on a boat on the way to the Tower of Heaven. I hope so. Lucy said. Where are we anyway? Gray questioned as they stared into the open horizon of the ocean. Have Juvia and her companions become lost? Juvia questioned. We're not lost, we're on the right path. Probably. Itachi replied with an emotionless expression. What do you mean probably? Lucy questioned with thick marks on her head. It's not exactly easy to travel on the sea without a compass or a map. Besides Natsu's nose will lead us there anyway. Itachi replied. Lucy turned towards Natsu. Natsu, are you sure this is the right way? Lucy asked then paled at seeing Natsu hanging his head over the side of the boat looking like he was about to vomit. We're relying on your nose, you know. Pull yourself together. Gray shouted. How dare you betray the lovely Gray Sama's expectations? Juvia said sharing Gray's expression. Damn. I can't believe we let him knock us out and snatch Urza and Happy, talk about pathetic. Gray said with shame in his voice. It's hard to believe a wizard of Urza's level was defeated, Juvia said. Huh. They didn't beat her. Don't act like you know about Urza. Gray scolded. I I'm sorry. Juvia apologized. She was caught off guard and nothing more. Itachi commented. Hey. How did they get past you anyway? Gray questioned. Quote comma dot quote. Yeah, you looked like you were in pain for a while there. Lucy said as they all besides Natsu who was busy not throwing up, looked at Itachi. Must have been something I ate. Itachi said and continued looking out at the horizon. Are you sure? Are you alright now? Gray asked looking a little worried. I'm fine, let's just focus on getting Urza back. Itachi replied. Natsu still looking pale stood up and looked around. Huh, what's this ominous feeling? Natsu questioned as everyone looked in one direction as they saw the birds that were flying in the air die. The birds, Lucy said. What in the world? Gray questioned when suddenly the ship hit something, they looked in the water and saw dead fish floating and some wooden parts that looked like they belonged to a ship. The fish too. Something's not right here, Juvia said. The group then spotted a mark on the debris of the ships. This debris, it's a Fury military ship. Gray said. I got a bad feeling about this, Lucy said. We're here, Itachi said as everyone looked at the direction he was looking. Is that, the Tower of Heaven? Lucy questioned as they saw a tall tower on a large rock. That's it, Itachi confirmed. It looks complete. Water dome. Juvia chanted as the water surrounded the boat in a dome of water. We can make landfall using this camouflage. W wow, Lucy said in awe. Natsu suddenly fell back into his motion sick state. Can't do this. We're almost there. Lucy said. Geez. You've got no sense of tension. Grace said. With Urza inside the tower, the ceremony will take place tonight. You can stay here until then, Nay san Sho said now dressed in a long red robe, with a collared pink pinstripe suit underneath. Urza was in a cell with her hands tied and her arms raised above her head as the middle of the rope was attached to a hook on the wall. Sorry it has to be this way, but it's what you get for betraying us. Jalal is angry. Still, you should feel honored. You're going to be the living sacrifice for the ceremony. Sho said with a crazed grin. I guess I will never see you again. Even so, it's all for heaven, Sho said as he saw Urza trembling. 
You're trembling. Afraid of being sacrificed. Or is it because of where we are? Sho asked as this was the same cell they were in back when they were children. I'm sorry about back then, Nay san It was my idea, but I was too afraid to say anything, it wasn't fair at all, was it? That doesn't matter now. Do any of you realize the danger of resurrecting someone with the R system? Urza asked. Wow, you know what the R system does. I'm surprised. Sho said with a cocky grin. The revive system. It can bring one person back from the dead, in exchange for many living sacrifices. It's inhumane, forbidden magic. Urza said in disgust. Magic has nothing to do with being humane, nay san. All magic corrodes people's humanity. Sho said with a crazed evil grin. That's the mindset of a black mage. You're no different than them. Urza said referring to those who used to keep them as slaves. They only saw this as resurrection magic. A spell to bring back the dead. But Jalal is different. He's going to lead us to the heaven that lies further ahead. Sho said with his back turned to Urza. Heaven. Urza questioned as she pushed her feet up against the wall to climb up and get loose from the hook holding the rope. Once Jalal revives him, the world will be reborn. We will be its rulers. The remnants of those who stole our freedom, your friends, the friends of the one who betrayed us, the ignorant citizens who live their lives oblivious to everything. Exclamation mark. The pathetic, useless members if the council. We are going to bring fear and sorrow to all. And then we'll take the freedom of all. We will be the rulers of the world. Sho said as he laughed like a madman. Urza having gotten loose ran up to Sho and swung her arms at his chin knocking him out as he hit the cell bars. Urza brought the rope to her mouth and bit it off. Sho, Urza muttered as an image of the happy little boy she once knew popped into her mind. What can drive someone to change this much? Urza questioned as she changed from her dress and into her standard armor. Jalal, are you to blame? Meanwhile at the top of the tower a young hooded man sat on a throne chuckling as one of his minions stood in front of him. Jalal Sama, the minion questioned. Urza is a wonderful woman, indeed. She's truly amusing. Will I prevail, or will Urza? Let's enjoy this game of heaven woven around life and death, past and future, the man known as Jalal said. He looked identical to Seagrain in every way, the only difference was the clothing, Jalal wore a dark blue hooded cloak with a white shirt with a blue tint underneath, on the left chest area of the cloak was a golden mark, he had simple loose dark pants and laced boots. With the magic council, we must do something, the little old cat man said. We need to gather information first, said the hooded man. Send the entire army immediately. The old woman said. Ignorant fools. Seagrain shouted. What did you say? Questioned the hooded man. How dare you, see The old woman said. That's simply what you are, if you're willing to send in the military. It's dangerous. Too dangerous. Seagrain said. What is your point? Questioned the bearded old man. None of you understand anything. If you want to destroy the Tower of Heaven immediately, there's only one way. An Aetherian blast from the satellite square. Seagrain said. What? Questioned the bearded old man in shock. The destructive spell that transcends space and time. The old cat man questioned in shock. Are you insane? Questioned the old woman also in shock. Have you any idea how much destruction that would cause? It has the power to obliterate an entire nation, you know. The hooded man said. An Aetherian blast is our last resort. It's even more dangerous than the R system. The old woman informed. That said, the satellite square can target anything in this region. And an Aetherian blast is the only way to destroy that enormous structure. Seagrain said. I agree. The dark purple haired woman said. Not you too, Ultir. The old bearded man said. There are nine of us in all. Only three more. We only need three more members in favor to fire an Aetherian. We've no time. We cannot allow him to use the R system. Seagrain said, even if it means to take the life of Jalal, your twin brother. The old bearded man asked. Of course. That's how dangerous of a system it is, Seagrain nodded. The Tower of Heaven having gotten to shore and arrived at the bottom area, where the entrance of the tower was. They sure have a lot of lookouts. Gray said. Wanna charge at him? Natsu asked. No, that would put Urza and Happy's life at risk. Proclaimed Itachi. The odds sure are stacked against us, Gray said. I found an underwater passage into the basement. Juvia said as the top of her body was floating on the water. Really. Way to go. Gray praised her. Juvia was praised. Not you. Juvia said looking at Lucy. Yes. Yes. Lucy replied having no idea what her deal was. It's about a 10 minute swim underwater. Juvia informed. Oh. 
That's a piece of cake. Natsu said smugly. Yeah. Gray agreed. That's clearly out of the question. Lucy said being the one who saw the problem. Please put these on, then. There's oxygen inside, so you can breathe underwater with them. Juvia said holding some sort of water bobble in her hand. Oh. Gray said in awe. Man, you're awesome. Who are you, anyway? Natsu asked to which Juvia paled. Later they swam underwater following Juvia until they reached the area in the basement of the tower. So now we're underneath the tower. Gray questioned. Where are Urza and Happy? Natsu questioned. These sure are handy, but kinda silly. Lucy said holding the water bubble. I'm impressed you made it here, I made yours smaller than the rest. Juvia said with a glint of hatred in her eyes. Hey, now, Lucy muttered as she went pale. Suddenly the roar of some beast was heard, they looked up to see a guard riding a monster-like creature. Intruders. Uh oh The guards surrounded them. Who the hell are you? Guess our only option now is to fight, Grace said when suddenly, sleep. Itachi said with his Sharingan spinning as the guards and the monsters fell to the ground snoring. We don't have time let's go. Why can't it always be like this? Lucy questioned. Then suddenly a statue on the wall, that was in the shape of a head, opened its mouth and revealed a pathway. Is this a way of saying, come up? Gray questioned. Blocky. Natsu shouted as they made their way through the tower. Keep it down. Lucy demanded. It doesn't matter they know we're here anyway. Itachi said. But, this is no time for eating. Itachi said as Natsu, Gray and Juvia sat at a table that was filled with food. What are you eating? Lucy questioned. This appears to be a dining hall. You should eat too, princess. A maid with short pink hair and blue eyes, with chains on her wrist said. When did I summon you? Lucy questioned to her spirit Burgo. Anyway that door was opened through magic so it's obvious they know we're here. Itachi said. Are they trying to provoke us? Gray questioned. Provoke. Lucy said looking puzzled. Incidentally, princess. I believe it's inappropriate to dress that way in the dining area. Burgo said referring to the fact that Lucy was dressed in her swimsuit. Inappropriate. Lucy questioned covering herself with her hands. Let's change your clothes, Burgo said as her fingers moved around madly. What? Right here, Lucy shrieked. As Gray looked over to them and then blushed. Oh, man, don't look, Gray-sama. Juvia cried. Huh. Itachi grunted with an emotionless expression. After she was done changing, Lucy was now wearing a green dress. This attire is from the celestial spirit world. Virgo said. What do you think? Yes, I know, it looks good on me. Lucy bragged. Wow, that's pretty cute. Gray complimented. Juvia is mortified. Anyway, let's get going. Itachi said tired of waiting. I pray for your success, princess. Virgo said as she went back into the spirit world. Thanks, Virgo. Honestly, I don't know how you guys can stand wearing wet clothes. Lucy said looking towards the others. This dries him quick. Gray said as he and Itachi used the heat from Natsu's flames to dry their clothes. A human drying machine. Lucy commented. There they are. A guard shouted. The intruders. Another one shouted as a group charged at them. Urza arrived and defeated all of them in one blow. Urza. Gray smiled. You're all right. Lucy shouted. That's so cool. Juvia commented. Wh why are you here? Urza questioned. Itachi walked up to her and poked her on the forehead. Friends help each other out. Itachi said with a smile. P please leave. Urza begged. You don't belong to this place. Don't give us that crap, Urza. Running away after being ridiculed will only tarnish Fairy Tail's name. That blockhead has to pay. Natsu said in an uproar. I'm telling you to leave. Urza demanded. But. They took Happy. We can't just leave now. Natsu shouted. They have Happy. Urza questioned. Don't tell me it was Miliana. Where is this person? Natsu asked. I I'm not sure. Urza replied. All right. I got it. Natsu said. Got what? Gray questioned. The fact that Happy is waiting for me. Natsu shouted and ran past Urza. Hey. Natsu. Urza said. That moron. Gray said. Let's go to. Lucy said. No. Urza said bringing out her sword. Miliana is an incomparable cat lover. I can't imagine her hurting Happy. I'll take responsibility for bringing them back. The rest of you need to get away from here at once. No, we can't leave without you. Lucy argued. This is my problem. I don't wish to drag you into it. Urza said. Itachi lightly hit her on the head. Don't go off acting all nightly again. Besides I'm involved as much as you are. I rescued you from this place. I will help you take it down. Besides all of us have been dragged into this by now. 
I won't allow, it's an order. Itachi said with an angry expression making Urza shake a little. Oh okay, Urza muttered in fear. Tell them now what this tower is, and who this Jalal is. Itachi said, and don't worry, no matter what we will help you out. This is the Tower of Heaven, also known as the R system. It happened over 10 years ago, a black magic cult began constructing it in order to cast a forbidden spell that can bring the dead back to life. It required many human sacrifices, who they used as slave labor to amplify the amount of magic energy. I was one of the sacrifices here when I was little. One by one people who tried to escape or resist disappeared. I never felt at ease. I was always afraid. Even so, I made friends I could trust, even if it was for but a brief time. It was around then that I met Jalal. Urza said as she began explaining how things went down with Jalal, how he was later captured and tortured after he tried to save Urza. One day, the guards found a boy washed up on the shore. They took him and placed him in the same cell as me and some other people. When he woke up we had a little chat then he decided to break free, the guards never counted on that this boy was extremely powerful. That boy was Itachi, Oni-chan. We then stood up for our freedom, to save Jalal, back then, Jalal was our leader, he had a strong sense of justice, I looked up to him. However, at some point, it was as if Jalal had become another person entirely, if you could call a person truly evil, then that is what I would call Jalal. Urza began to tell the tale of the battle the slaves took against the ones who have kept them prisoner for so long, how Rob died, how she was inspired to join Fairy Tale, how Jalal changed after having talked to the so-called god, Zirf, and how the thought of being chosen changed him. How Jalal took over the tower and decided that he would revive Zirf. But most of all, what really made Itachi angry was that Jalal threatened her to leave, and that if she ever told anyone in the Magic Council about it he would kill all the slaves and destroy the tower, and that Urza would have their deaths on her conscience forever. What made Itachi even more furious is that Jalal did this even though Urza had feelings for him. Urza was now shaking as a trail of tears ran down from her one real eye. I, will fight Jalal. The Magic Council, our only course of action now is an Ethereum attack from the satellite square. Seagrain declared, the R system is a forbidden magic that must not become a part of the history books. You do understand what that means, don't you? Altir said looking at the other council members who looked skeptical about this whole plan. An Ethereum attack would obliterate everything, including innocent civilians, another council member informed. Plus, Jalal is your twin brother. It goes without saying he would be killed as well. That doesn't trouble you, the old cat man questioned looking at Seagrain. I am prepared for that. Seagrain said looking like he was grieving about his twin brother's fate. We have all come this far standing on the back of sacrifices. Such is the magic world of today. The hooded man said, Master Leiji, if we do this, we'll go down in the history books for the crime of attacking Ka Elm territory without warning. The old bearded man informed. In that sense, we'll have made another sacrifice of our own for progress. The old woman said, Master Belno. The old bearded man said to the old woman known as Belno's statement. The dead cannot come back. We must be able to say that when we teach our children the value of life. The hooded man known as Leiji said, I've got no choice, I vote in favor of the Ethereum attack. Belno said raising her hand in a vote. One more to go, Seagrain muttered. The Tower of Heaven, one more, huh, just one more person until it's game over, Jalal said chuckling darkly as he sat on his throne. Back with Itachi and the others, hold on, Urza. That Zirf guy you mentioned. Gray said as a memory of a certain demon came to mind. Yes, I'm sure you've heard of him. Urza said, th that monster that came out the lullaby, they called it one of Zeref's demons. Lucy said, lullaby, Itachi questioned, the Eisenwald guild tried to kill the guild masters, they thought using a flute known as lullaby would help, the flute turned into a giant demon, we took care of it. Urza explained, huh, I missed a lot when I was gone didn't I? Itachi asked, meh, only two major things. Gray replied, anyway, lullaby is not all. Deliora was most likely a demon from the Book of Zirf as well. Urza said, are you saying Jalal is trying to revive that same Zirf? Juvia asked, I don't understand his motive, but according to Sho, a former friend of mine, they're supposed to become rulers in heaven once Zirf is revived, Urza said. This former friend business just doesn't make any sense to me, wasn't Jalal the traitor, not you? Lucy asked, he must have obviously fed them false information, 
I'm guessing something about her and me betraying all of them and leaving them to die. Itachi said. Most likely. Urza said but then looked down in shame. But I did leave them for eight whole years, that still makes me a traitor. But you did it for their sake. Yet. Lucy said. It doesn't matter now, Lucy. Urza silenced Lucy. If I defeat Jalal, it will all be over. Wh what's with that story, Nay san Sho said having arrived at the scene, he had his eyes wide in disbelief and he was sweating. Sho, Urza muttered, are you trying to get your friend's sympathy with that nonsense? Exclamation mark. It's a load of crap. The truth was nothing like that. You and him blew up our boats and escaped on your own. We all would have ended up on the bottom of the sea had Jalal not caught wind of the betrayal. Jalal said this is the fate of those who don't learn to use magic in the proper way. He said that he got you drunk with the power of magic and that he told you to cast off everything in your past, us included. Sho shouted pointing at Itachi. And you believed him? Itachi asked. Do you really think the Urza you knew would do something like that? Ask yourself this, can you really call yourself Urza's friends if you're not even willing to hear her side of the story? Itachi asked making Sho shake in shock. W what would you know? You were only here for a few minutes. What could you possibly know about us? Jalal's words were my only salvation. That's why I spent eight long years finishing this tower. For Jalal's sake, you're saying, it was all a lie. That you're right, and that Jalal is wrong. Sho questioned with tears forming in his eyes. That's right. Simon said as he appeared in a shadow in the room. You. Gray was about to charge when Juvia stopped him. Please wait, Gray Sama. This gentleman knew he was attacking your double back then. Juvia said. What? Gray questioned. As a dark spell caster, he surely saw everything clearly. Ascertaining the truth was another reason Juvia came here. Juvia informed. I'd expect no less from a member of Phantom's renowned Element 4. Simon said. What does this mean? Sho questioned. Sho, I did it to bring everyone to this tower without rousing your suspicions. Simon replied. Why? Why would you? Sho said as tears formed in his eyes. Sho, Jalal has everyone fooled. Simon said as he placed his hand on Sho's shoulder. I decided to play along until the time was right. Simon, you were. Urza muttered in shock. I always believed in you, Urza. For eight years straight, Simon said as Urza began to form tears again in her eyes, tears of happiness that is. I'm happy to see you again, Urza. From the bottom of my heart. Simon, Urza muttered as they embraced each other in a hug. How? How can everyone have so much faith in you? Why? Why couldn't I believe in you, Nay-san? Damn it! Sho cried as he hit the floor. What's real? What should I believe in? Urza walked up to Sho. I realize it's difficult to accept everything all at once. But I will say this, over the past eight years, I never once forgot about any of you. I'm sorry I was so helpless, Urza embraced Sho in a hug. Itachi looked at Urza and remembered how sometimes she would cry in her sleep, when she was younger while thinking about the others from this cursed tower. But now you can do something. Isn't that right? Simon asked to which Urza nodded. I've been waiting for this moment. For mighty wizards to gather here. Mighty wizards? Lucy questioned. We're going to fight Jalal, all working together. First we must prevent the salamander and the others from clashing. Simon said. This Jalal seems to be nothing more than a pawn in a larger ploy. All I know is that he is living in an illusion, and he will not be free until someone beats him back into reality. Itachi said, you're thinking there is a way to bring him back to who he used to be. Simon questioned, maybe, maybe not, depends if he's not too far gone. Itachi said as some sort of hope returned in Urza's eyes. With Natsu Natsu ran around the tower until he stopped in front of a room filled with cat decorations. What's with this room? There's cats everywhere, Natsu said as he spotted a large green cat head mask. Oh, this is neat, it's a costume, boink. Natsu said as he placed the mask on his head and did some poses. Let's go, happy. Aye sir, hey. Natsu chuckled then tried to take the mask off but to no avail. Huh, I it's stuck. Oh, man, Natsu said looking a little gloomy. But it's cool, so oh well. While behind him was Wally with his gun arm ready. Dandy. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe and have the notification bell turned on, so you never miss another exciting story.